Hello there, and welcome back to The Closet Historian, and back to my long ongoing series, and yet I didn't really make many of them here in 2021, Sign Hustlin'. Now, of course, I had made some goals last year in, for 2021, and so I went back and watched my own video to see how I did on those, and I took some notes here so we can go through them relatively quickly here. So in 2021, I wanted to sew less, and my goal was to sew 30 things or less. Um, and I did not actually sew 30 things or less, but I did sew less than I did in 2020, because in 2020, I made 60 something garments. And in 2021, I only made 40 something garments. I think it was like 42 or something like that total. Um, if we're not counting hats and things like that, mostly just garments. So I did manage to make fewer items since last year. But the reason I made that goal was to hopefully sew less and write more, which didn't happen. I sewed less, but it didn't exactly translate into more time spent writing. So we'll get to it. <clears throat> um, I also wanted to try and be on a fabric low buy, which sure. I did want to have a big closet clear out, which I did. So uh, I have two videos actually here. I will link to one of them in a card of me clearing out, like going through everything that I had in my closet, everything I've made in the last decade or purchased, thrifted, anything like that. Um, so I went through my entire closets and tried to clean out as best I could. I did, I think I cut out around 40%. I really cut down, um, so that was good. And then I had a big sale over on Etsy of a lot of things. And I still do need to restock my Etsy shop again now that I have a few things to throw in there from being out thrifting this past year. But I do need to kind of go through my closet again and just grab any of the stragglers that hung around for another year, but I haven't worn them or like haven't thought about wearing them. So I do need to throw a few more things into my shop from my closet just because I didn't reach for them. Not that that means a lot in years where we're not allowed to leave the house, but I just didn't even like dream about wearing them. And that means it's time for them to go. Now, my next goal was to get vaccinated. Uh, at the time when I made that goal, I don't think they had like announced the vaccines, but it was eons away that people my age group would be able to get them. And I did, of course, get vaccinated back in June. And then again, this last month, I got my booster. So I'm feeling vaccinated. I, again, uh, for those of you who don't know, love medical science, huge fan of medicine and science in general. So I'm ready to have any jab that they want to give me, honestly, over there. So, um, you know, I, I like to be to immune as much to as much as possible, honestly, moving forward. Now, I wanted to develop a better relationship with Instagram which I think I did okay for a little while. Yeah, but I'm basically back where I was. I still have that little timer thing that you can turn on on your phone where it says like, you only get 15 minutes on Instagram and then you have to get off. Um, so I guess since I ignore that now, what I should try to do is get back to actually only allowing myself that 15 minutes on Instagram each day. We'll see. We'll see if it gets added to the goals video this year. But uh, I would say I did a little bit better for like the first six months of the year. And then I just fell back into my old patterns of spending too much time on Instagram, honestly. Next up, I had a very specific numerical reading goal to read 25 books in 2021. And uh, I, I read three books in 2021. So nearly, nearly hit it. Um, not at all. I packed so many and like shorter books to go when I went on my trip. I packed so many books to read. And every night I was absolutely exhausted and didn't read like a single page of any of those books. I, I took those books on a grand tour of the Western United States with me, but I didn't read a single one of them. So, uh, you know, three books is better than zero books, but I think we can do better on that next year. <clears throat> but next up on my list, I do have another goal that I was able to meet, and that was to pay off my private student loan. So like many people in the United States, especially, I had multiple loans to get me through college, uh, including federal loans, which are taken from the government, and then also private loans, which are taken from a bank. Um, and who do I trust more, banks or government? I don't really know, honestly. But I decided I would try my darndest in the last year, now that I had a full-time job uh, with some stability, thanks to Patreon, thank you, um, that I would try and pay off my private loan so I could not have that debt hanging over me anymore, that one particular debt at least. And I was able to do that in uh, the beginning of November, I paid off my private student loan and it felt weird and good. And it feels strange to not have that one particular bill each month now. Um, and it's nice to not have that debt hanging over me as I enter into 2020, 2022 here. Um, but I do still have my federal loans, which are twice what that loan was. So there's not really, I mean, to meet my other goals, I can't really pay off that one in a lump sum anytime soon. Um, 
But we'll see what happens with federal loans here in the United States. Am I allowed to have hope? Let's not, let's not get into it. It's too... And then another goal I had, despite trying to save money to pay off that loan, was to make another big silk costume in 2021. And I did, of course, uh, make a co cotton costume, the Carmine gown, and then also the Mandragora gown. Um, of course, Mandragora isn't completely finished, but it still counts the Daybodice version. I constructed it in 2021, and I'll finish the beating on it in 2020, 2022. Yeah, yeah, that counts. And then my stretch goals for 2021 were, or like my sillier goals, were to take French classes possibly. And I haven't done that yet. I really should. Uh, but at the same time, my introvert tendencies just really went out on signing up to leave the house. I just, I'm not the best. And then I had a goal to go on a road trip, which of course I did. You all know this. I can put a uh, card up to the playlist of videos that I made while I was on the road this past fall, visiting several states and several national parks and pretending to be a nature person. Um, and it turns out nature is quite nice, uh, as long as you don't let your hiking boots destroy you, which I did on day one, but I digress. And then I had a sillier goal to get dressed up for dinner, to like wear a fancy outfit for dinner. And I actually did do that in Vegas. I wore a beaded evening gown to dinner by myself. So I had a very fancy dinner for one. And I still think about the pistachio ice cream with hot fudge and that really nice martini. But, uh, you know, can't be having fancy dinners in Vegas all the time now, can we? And then lastly, uh, my other silly goal was to get a new tattoo in the last year. But with all the cancellations that happened with tattoo artists from the pandemic and the ongoing situation and tattoo shops getting closed down all the time, everyone is booked out until like 2030. So I don't know when or if this can happen, but I'd like it to maybe sometime in the future. But of course, my biggest goal of all for 2021 was to spend more time writing. And, uh... Uh, to really prioritize it. But to prioritize writing is to prioritize my own sanity, mental health, self, uh, and prioritizing myself above my work, like my, the work that you all see, is not easy for me to do. The first six months of this last year, I did better about giving myself dedicated time in my schedule, taking time off from my other work to do writing alone and just like focus on that for a few days. But the second half of this year, I completely failed to make time for writing and in that sense failed to make time for myself. Uh, it is what refuels me the most, what makes me the most, ex like when I'm writing is the time when I feel most excited to be alive, a person, um, and to, I, it's kind of like I've been chugging along as best I can, at, especially like since I haven't done any writing since before. I left my trip, so this past summer, since summer, and I just haven't allowed myself the time to refuel like that. So it's a long time to kind of be like, okay, just another week, just another week, just another week, and then I'll be able to do some writing. And I never quite got ahead enough to be able to make the time. Um, so that's a problem. And a reoccurring, or rather a consistent one, if you're not new around here. New year, same me. And working on writing is in some ways how I work through my own uh, stuff. Like my characters deal with different things than I do, but my insecurities leak into theirs. My own mind leaks into my art, which now that I mention it aloud, doesn't sound so unusual. So when I don't make time for the most personal of my mediums, put things down on the page, the tank of words in my brain begins to overfill. I've got to get that text out somewhere or it starts to spill between my neurons in unfortunate ways. And speaking of neurons and things that kept me from getting as much writing done as I would have liked in the last two years, a warning, I am about to talk a tiny bit about being a human who menstruates. But I finally started tracking my worst days of darker anxiety slash the sads and noticed a pattern. And the pattern was that even though my personal cycle is wackadoodle and can't decide if it wants to be 28 days or 35, I have my most depressed days in the week before my period. Now I'm not talking I get a bit more peeved than usual. I'm talking I cry myself to sleep for three days in a row and the dark lying thoughts get to whisper to me nonstop for several days, kind of cold creeping sadness, nopity nope times. I liken it to like a creeping lack of levity, a slow, unsudden strangulation that only once my stupid body relents and overnight gives me my chemicals back is released and I can breathe again so clearly that I immediately now notice the sharp and distinct difference. In May last year, I had some extra bleak insomniatastic nights and decided to go to the doctor to see if they agreed I may be struggling with something called PMDD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. 
and my doctor agreed I did, and I started medication that day. PMDD is caused by a drop in serotonin due to changing levels of progesterone. Turns out when your chemicals are not doing what they usually do, your brain can start lying to you. Very rude. So I've been trying a low dose of SSRIs this last year, and it has absolutely helped. I mention all of this because if having four to five super dark days a month sounds familiar, but otherwise your mental health is pretty manageable, it may be worth tracking such things and looking into it, because you deserve better than to be super sad like that, and so do I, really. So 2021 was harder for me personally than 2020 was even, just because although 2020 involved a lot of change and uh, fear, um, 2021, my brain started fighting me a little bit more. And it really, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't think this is a uh, clinical way of really describing this kind of thing. But like, for me, I definitely notice when it's those few days of the month that are my worst days. Um, I can feel, I'm like, I, I notice a shift and then I think, oh, this is chemical. And I feel really lucky in that, that I can tell that this extra darkness, this extra sadness is coming from somewhere and that it isn't me. It feels, it still feels separate from me in a way that I wasn't able to recognize before. But now that I know, like uh, tracking everything and like really identifying the source of the issue has really helped me even on my days where I'm still feeling lower, know that it's not me and that it will go away and it will change. And just knowing that is super helpful. Um, but I didn't know that until I went to the doctor in like June, I think is when I like late May, early June is when I went and got help for PMDD. But before that, I just spent a week each month in a darker place. And that adds up, you know, um, it's time that I needed back. And I'm on my way to getting there. I still do think that I perhaps need to adjust my dosage of my current medication or um, could, you know, really get into the nitty gritty of uh, how I want to treat this, I suppose. But just knowing that it's like knowing it has a name, I guess has helped. But then of course, I also did lose my cat Cleo this last year. Um, and she's been my buddy since I was 13. Um, I, of course, didn't always live here at home, so I wasn't always with her, but since I've been living back here at home for the last eight years or so, however long, it, ever since I've been uh, graduated from college and moved back home, she has, we've been, like, inseparable, and she would sit, sit on my lap with me every night for hours on end, and she would follow me around the house, and so it's been very strange to be without her, of course, and um, I miss her, and I want my buddy back, but I just not possible, you know? So that was another, it was hard to have her be sick. And then it was hard to have her be sick while I was on my trip and then lose her while I was away. I finally, you know, <laughs> I finally was in a place financially that I could go on a trip again. I was finally in a place with my work where I felt I had worked enough beforehand to kind of store up some videos to post while I was gone um, so that it wouldn't be a huge break on the channel while I was gone. So I was finally in a good place I was vaccinated to be able to go on a trip again, leave the house and like do something like that for myself again. And then fate really decided to kick me. Um, and my cat ended up, you know, getting super sick weeks before I left and then gone while I was gone. So um, it was, <laughs> I, I, I really was looking forward to that trip. And of course it changed the tenor of the whole thing because while I was gone at the start, I was stressed that she wouldn't be there when I got back. And halfway through the trip, I found out that she wouldn't be there when I got back. And so that trip did not, was not everything I had hoped it would be, of course, because of that loss. I, when looking back on 2021, I think I did the best I could with the year that we were all given or like that I was given. And I've been, of course, absolutely so lucky during this pandemic that I work from home, that I have been safe, that my family have been safe. Um, I'm incredibly lucky, like beyond lucky. And I feel like I've really come out of it well. So it's hard to get down on what I didn't accomplish in this last couple of years, because I've just been so privileged and lucky throughout them. But I really have to fix the way I prioritize writing. <laughs> uh, and I, I need an entirely new strategy because I say this every year and yet I do not I never actually managed to make it my top priority. Work, my other work, always, I always put it before my writing. And in order for writing to become 
my other career, um, for it to become more than a side hustle, a side, side, side hustle, I have to rejig, reconfigure how I work on anything. So I'm going to think about how I'm going to do that and look at my schedule and my to-dos and my unofficial job descriptions and figure out where I'm going to make the shifts so that writing can become my top priority and everything else my second. Uh, so yeah, I'll work on that and I'll get back to you very shortly with my goals for 2022. Thank you as always for listening to me ramble on about myself. Uh, it's very kind of you to put up with me in these side hustling videos. Thank you so much for your support here on the channel and I will see you again here real soon. Bye. An absolutely huge thank you to Rhonda, Che, Beatrice, Lacey, Nancy, Anna, Brianne, Carol, Michelle, Margaret, Rachemus, Lynn, Ellen, Myrna, Karina, Lilith, Swingularity, Tracy, Denise, Fern, Samantha, Eloquent Silence, Michaela, Kelly, Audra, Alice, Margot, Rachel, Tom, Renee, Amy, and Maria. You have made my dreams a reality, and there's no way I can thank you enough. Thank you to all of my patrons and to all of you who watch my videos.